Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my co-host Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you uh, just tell the audience what we're going to be discussing today? It's a very, very fun topic. Yeah, well, Sean is the uh, the sales leader for a company that sells sales engagement technology, and we do a lot of cold calling. So you'd imagine he's probably a decent cold calling coach, helping different reps with different styles and different um, bad habits and good habits, each to their own. So I wondered maybe we could sit down and talk about what would be a good uh, cold caller. What are their habits? Uh, sorry, coach of a cold caller, and what would be maybe a bad coach? What do they do? What do they not do? So maybe. Where do you want to start? Good, bad, something else? Well, I'll, I'll just say, I'll just, I can maybe go through some of the bad things people do. All right, let's go. Um, so, you know, one thing is, if you're a cold caller, one of the bad things people do is you sound like a cold caller. <laughs> Meaning when you actually make the call, you know, the person knows that you're cold calling. And it doesn't have to be from anything from the dial. It's just that you go right into a sales pitch where as you know, they don't do any research. I have so many people call me. I don't know about you, but I mean, hey, I have the perfect client for you. And uh, this is, oh, what do we do? And they have no clue what we do. So the first thing I would say is that what people don't do not do is they don't do enough research before the call. So that's one. Um, I would teach them how to research, what to research, um, how to find different nuggets, because nobody's really going to want to talk to you unless you've actually done some work. Um, so doing that work, and I think what's one of the, the things that people don't do is that pre-work. Um, so you might want to call 200 people a day, but if you can actually make 50 calls a day, but actually know and done research on those 50 calls, you will probably get a better percentage of people to talk to than those 200. So the one thing is I would say um, is a cold color sounding like a robot or sounding like a cold color is probably the number one reason why people are not successful at cold color. So as a coach, like with respect, I've, I've listened to some people's calls and they just sound like that. That's just how they are. They talk like that. It's very monotonous, very like one tone and slow, and a bit yeah. dreary, that type of thing. If that's how they are, that's how they are. And it's probably going to be a little bit difficult for them. Some people like super high energy and, hey, Sean, how you doing? It's me calling. And that is like the opposite. How, how with that can you coach that? Because th- what they're saying could be the same thing, but... So I, I, think, have an advantage. I think you have to be in the middle there. If you're, if, if I'm going to cold call you and just talk like this, would you want to buy off me? No, you're not going to want to buy off me. But if I go, Hey, Ollie, you know, it's been a while. You know, I just want to, and then you go right into it. You kind of, they'll feed off your energy. So you got to have some sort of energy on that call. It's just like, you know, you know, you know, when you go dating, people say, I hate that boring guy. People don't like the boring guy. And if you sound boring and you're just being sound like a robot, you're probably not going to get that second date, Ollie, right? So you want to That's sound why you boring. got married so late, is it? <laughs> so you want to be very enthusiastic. You want to be, you know, you want to, you want them to feed off your energy. If you do your research and they feed off your energy, you will get it. But, you know, I think we've spoken about this is, you know, one thing I like to do is, and, and this is in, in, in my everyday life and in and, and cold calling and email, everything, is be a little bit witty. I like to use, you know, my personality. So for me, you know, if I was going to go on a cold call, I, I would be straight to the point. But listen, Ollie, listen, I've been hung up on 15 times today because I'm cold calling. It's my job. This is a cold call. Can I just have 15 seconds of your time to give you my pitch? If you don't like it, right after that, you get off the phone. And most people that do that to me, I'm like, 15 seconds, go. And I actually test yeah, them. Me too. I give them that 15 seconds. If they go, and after 15 seconds, I'm like, hey, I only give you 15 seconds. So you have to make sure you have that elevator pitch in that 15 seconds. That to me is important. So I think being witty, getting straight to the point, but doing your research is extremely important. So those are the things that I would coach someone to cold call. And I think you know the one thing that I find also is, is bad is too much talking. Like even though you're cold calling, it should still be a 70, 30, 80, 20 split where they're doing the talking. But like, hey, Ollie, like, is, is this one, you, you know, is cold calling an issue for your company? No, we're okay with that. Oh, so what other channels you like? And just start asking different questions. The longer you ask questions, it's going to be either A, they're going to be like, I just, can I get a phone? I don't want to talk to you. Or they're going to be like answering your questions. You're going to get to know more about them. And then when you ask those three, four, five questions, one of those questions actually might end up being a pain point or a challenge. And then now you've really locked them in. Be like, oh, 
oh, you guys do solve that. So I think you got to ask as many questions, but be a very good listener. Yeah, and oftentimes the questions up front are just being brushed away. They're not truly being answered like genuinely because why would you sometimes? But uh, but yeah, being able to ask those questions and follow up and just carry that off without having stage fright or following the script too hard, I think is important. That oftentimes as well. I think I, I've seen um, poorly coached reps delivering a crappy script are going to do a bad job. There's nothing they can do about it. I've had, just like you said, when you kind of want to have that 70-30 split where you're not talking all the time, Obviously, you're going to have to partake in it and you're going to have to steer the conversation. But I hate that feeling when you're, yeah, I'll give you 30 seconds. You're talking on the phone and then they take like three minutes. And oh, you, yeah. all the while you're just thinking, I want to wait until you're done talking so I can tell you that's not three minutes and I'm I'm off. But that's so annoying. And people often say, I've actually had um the most recent one, which is unfortunate for them. They literally told me what year the company was founded, what previous companies the founders have worked for, well, how much they raised on the stock market. I'm like, I don't care, like at all. That's not even being rude, but that's just a crappy marketer who's written the scripts and they're just following it because there's no one coaching them to do better. So it's funny you said something there, scripts. And personally, I hate scripts. Really? I do. I, I do. like them to help me, but then yeah, I but deviate. You know, I read right through it. If I have somebody cold calling me, I have this, you know, I, a few weeks ago, this, this, this girl called me and on the phone, I can tell. She's reading off a script when she's talking to me. And I asked her, I'm like, are you reading off a script? And she goes, yeah, we have a company script. I'm like, put it away. Now give me the pitch. Because if you're reading off a script, again, it sounds like I'm sounding to a robot. I'd rather somebody give me the pitch, screw up on the phone, but learn from it, and then go again and do it. Because every time you do it, it might be a little bit different. You might find a different way to say it. But I hate when I actually hear it. And I can tell. I know when somebody's reading off the script right away and I, and I and i call them out i go put your script away just give me the pitch give me the 30 second pitch and the problem is because they're so used to a script they actually can't explain their product or service in 30 seconds and they don't really know what their product is because they're so used to reading off the script and when i ask them mm. give me 15 seconds what do you do they still don't talk. like i'll be like okay like but still again you've talked to me for 25 seconds what do you do what do you sell what service do you provide and it still happens. That's just bad coaching though, isn't it? That's you're, you're enabling people to lean on a crutch forever and too hard. Whereas at some point, yes, start with one. Absolutely. Cause you don't understand how to articulate the value prop. So you have to start with it uh, like point blank is at least in my opinion, but then to get away from it. So at one point, like maybe you're two weeks in your new job and you kind of feel like you get it. Maybe try some or at least role play some where you're not doing it at all, but you're kind of like close to it. Give or take, and if you if you mess it up, that's cool. You're, you're two weeks in, and it's it's role play, so that's fine. Yeah, but I, I just I just feel like you know when you do it, it just they're also no, let's use this example. Here, I have a water. I'm gonna cold call you and sell you this water. Here, Ollie, uh, I'm selling water. Blah, blah blah. And then as a prospect, be like, oh, what's inside the water? Uh, I don't know. That wasn't on my script. Oh, what's the water made of? Where do you make the water? Where's it? Where's it pr produced? Uh, I don't know any of those answers. That's what happens when I go on a cold call and I start asking questions. They just know what they're selling. They know the product or service, but they know nothing about it. So anybody that's going to be interested is going to ask you five, six questions about it, and you won't know the product knowledge or the, the service provider. And the um, the script branching will probably be a rebuttal to tell them, well, if you book a call to my account executive, they will be happy to answer your question. And yeah. that's a really crappy way of saying, well, I don't know. I'm just sort of paid to crank out the dials. And that's like a whole like sales team self thing, not particularly the, the caller themselves, but yeah, yes, exactly. So now what do I, what do I do? Some of the good, the, the best cold callers do. Um, I would say the best cold callers, a definitely do the research Two, uh, they handle rejection and objections, right? Good, good caller callers. No, it's a numbers game. You make 10 calls, 100 calls, 50 calls, you're going to get a certain percentage of the call. So not getting discouraged throughout the day, but as I said, and not using a script. Being yourself, showing your personality on the phone is the best way to do it. Also knowing how to a, answer questions precise within, within, within seconds, not minutes, within seconds, but then ask the right questions. That's what makes uh, 
a cold calling success. And what you said is one of the greatest points. I hate it. Like I sometimes get people, you know, they ask me a question. Oh, let me introduce my AE. Or I'll get someone on LinkedIn uh, and they'll be trying pitching me. Like, oh, my CEO wants to talk to me. Well, if your CEO wants to talk to me, they can message me themselves. That's like, such a dumb, like, uh, pretend thing. It's that's never, ever the real, ever. And, 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 and even gonna, so, you've never heard of them. So you're like, oh, who cares? I, I'm, I'm not going to mention a name on the, on the podcast, but when I was the owner of uh, Autoclose, um, I reached out to a very, very big sales influencer. He helps a lot of SaaS companies. And I was just going to get, I wanted to get a quote to kind of help us out, you know, with scaling. And I, I, I filled out a form and said, hey, love to learn more. Like I reached out and he had one of his, his reps or someone call me and say, hey, before we give you a call with so-and-so, um, you know, I'll be working with you and I'll give you. No, but I want to talk to this person. I want to speak to the, the, the CEO of your company who does this for a living and helps SaaS companies scale. He's like, well, I do the call. I'm like, if he doesn't have five minutes of time to talk to me, then I don't have time to give him my business. And do you know they still wouldn't give me the call and a week later, the CEO messed me saying, Hey, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm very busy. Well, you're, if you're very busy, I don't want you being my, I don't want you helping me. Well, you're just going to pawn this off to somebody. So it's the same thing with cold calling. I don't want to hear that you're going to introduce me to an AE. I don't want to hear that you're going to have your CEO reach back out to me. I want to ask you then and there on that call what those questions are. Yeah, I think that's a business model problem, but I know what you mean. You kind of want to. It sets a bad vibe, doesn't it? Bad precedent. So, what, anyway, it shows so. like what? Do you think your CEO is a uh, is more important than me? Do you think he's on a pedestal to me? Do you do you think I, that I have to wait for your AE's time to to come to me? No, I just think it's. I want to ask you some questions right now. I want to be pre qualified right now on the cold call. Pre qualify me now and tell me you are a good fit or you are not a good fit. That's what I want. I don't want to take another call. I don't want to have to book another demo. I want to know right there and there. So a lot of that is like competency and skill as a salesperson and plus the confidence, I would say. You've got to have some rope to be able to do that. And, and in some cases, like you just said, you're just like not allowed. Process-wise, you're not allowed. Yeah. So in terms of the coaching that person, coaching someone who's decent to get better, let's say they're doing like the water bottle example you just did there. They're doing an all right job. They're deviating away from the initial script that they've had to learn from. So what, what are you doing to coach somebody? Are you taking their calls once a week or a month, that sort of thing, or, or picking out some good ones and some bad ones and calling out highlights, trying to sort of help them emphasize good and bad bits? Or are you, are so, you setting a precedent and helping them stick closer to it or what? So, you know, to coach them originally, what I do is I always like them, um, before you make one cold call, you're going to make you're in a cold call internally. You're going to make a calls internally. And get to actually do the call or dummy call. Oh no, but I, I would sometimes have, or I'll have them. You know, I'll give a number of like a good friend of mine or somebody that's not at the company that can just do me a favor yeah. for five minutes and take their call. I call. like if it's actually real because there's nothing like actually picking up the phone or like oh yeah f- physically, no, but, but you know, but to just put, like you and me on Zoom, it's different. I will put some some tests on. I will give some numbers and say, hey, this person's interested. Can you give them a call? But meanwhile, it's actually a, a colleague of mine or someone I know on LinkedIn that I've done some favors for, and I'm asking them to do me a favor. And give me feedback. And we've we've done that sometimes even here. Our salespeople don't know that. But ideally, that's what we want to do is we want to get them real life situations, learning on how to actually make those calls. Now, handling the different rejections, making sure they're asking the right questions, knowing the product, all that stuff is stuff that I would go back to that person and be like, hey, how did my rep do? And before they're actually getting on the call, I would actually make sure that, you know, they're going to, you have to live and learn through cold calling as well. So you need to be at, at least 75, 80% ready. And the other 20, 25%, you'll, you'll, you'll get through experience making those first three to 500 calls throughout the first few weeks. Um, Cause you're not going to make the first call and, and, and just start killing it right from the beginning. You have to make it slowly. So that's what I would do um, with the coaching. And I do listen to calls. So I do, I do listen to calls and I, I, I do, try my best to provide feedback, but there's certain things that you can't change. Um, tone, you know, you, if you can't tell someone to just be way more energetic on the phone because hey, you'll do, it'll just sound like it's fake. And they're that's doing just that their individual that. stuff though, isn't it? You can't tell me to be the opposite of what I'm like. It ain't going to work. So you have exactly. to like try and refine what I have. Exactly. And not everyone is meant for cold calling. Like it's not for everybody. Me personally, I know I can do my thing over email and social and cold calling was never something I enjoyed doing. 
I've, I've, I've done a few in my in my career. I, I can do it, but it's just you know I just have more success doing something before I make that cold call. So that is mm. you know reaching out on LinkedIn, building some sort of trust, making a list, you know, or going after a specifically targeted list. Like for example, I remember early on in my career, uh, we were selling email archiving to the Colorado Rockies baseball team. And I literally in one day made a list of 50, 50 major league baseball teams called each one and basically said, hey, we're working with Colorado Rockies and trying to give them that FOMO, fear of missing out. And that oh, nice. worked for me. But just making exact cold calls from a list, I need to be very targeted when I do those lists. Yeah, I'm the same. I find it quite stressful to just be shotgunning. I need to have some level of specificity. Otherwise, it doesn't feel like I'm, I need to be making a call. Me exactly. personally. So yep. to coach me, you wouldn't just say, hey, don't worry about it. Get on and make a load more because it's it's the same thing. Or, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's difficult. So last thing I'll ask before we jump off here. Um, so you mentioned a minute ago about how to find the sort of things that you're going to mention, like uh, the list building, the personalization parts. Do you, do you try and help people like make that a process that they can optimize? Because uh, I, I don't know if you remember, we did this quite a while ago. Um we were looking at some top tier accounts we wanted to break into and how do we find the information fast enough was quite a big problem because it's taken so long. It's right. You want to find what tools they have. That's a whole thing. You want to find what hiring they're doing. That's a whole thing. How do we do that quickly? Cause otherwise like we're not going to do anything. That was the thing. Is that still a thing for you or is, or is the most of the work just fairly routine and we have that data available? Uh, it, it's more routine. So for me, it would, you know, I used to do one of the ways I used to do was like geography, for example, um, Let's just say, for example, you know, Vanilla Soft closed. You know, let's just say York University here in Toronto. Within a minute, I'd make a list of a UFT and all the universities around, all the colleges around, within the vicinity. All that stuff is publicly available. Get the information. Get the names. Look on LinkedIn. You know, spend some time. Build a list of fifty in the afternoon to make the fifty calls. But I have the name, the, the job title, and I, I have it in saying we work with with, with Canadian universities already. We work with someone that actually just, you know, 50 miles from you. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, legally, I can't tell you the name, but we do work with them. They've signed contracts. This is what we did for them. This is the kind of how it worked. This is what didn't work. This is how we implemented it. And that's how I would do it. So I, would be, I wouldn't just take a generic list and go one by one. I would make it very targeted um, by either a map or by competitors, or I'll go to, I'll go on LinkedIn and be like, hey, go. I know you work at Intel now, but you used to work at Dell. And then I'd go call Dell and then I'd find out they worked at Dell. Oh, would they work at before that and keep going back? So there's different different techniques I would do, but I would do a very much more targeted approach than just the uh, the spray and pray. There we go. All right. Well, I think we're just about out of stuff to talk through and uh, probably about out of time, aren't we? Perfect. Well, I want to uh, thank everybody that uh, listened to us live today. And uh, this has been a, a good episode. Thank you for everybody listening wherever you are. Also, if you have not yet, make sure you give us a five-star review wherever you're listening from so you don't miss our next show, our next guest, or just Ollie and I ranting. Thanks again. See you soon.